Greetings. In this video, we are going to install IIS or add IIS to Windows Server 2016. Uh, this is Windows Server 2016 running with a desktop experience on VirtualBox. So the first thing we need to do is go here to our Start button, <clears throat> the Windows button, go to Server Manager, and this will take a second to populate. It looks like it's done. Click on Add Roles and Features. You can click on Next here and Next here and Next here as well. <clears throat> so this installation is the default installation. Uh, we just installed it a little while ago from uh, the eval copy, the eval ISO. We're going to choose Web Server IIS. IIS is the Windows web server. It's like Apache, but it's for Windows. Add features. Click on Next. And Next. And Next. And then here are all the options we have, uh, the services that run with IIS. So depending on what you want to do, you may want to add some more of these. Um, but I wouldn't add anything unless it's absolutely necessary. If you're unclear, uh, what you need now, you should go with the defaults, and then later you can add something uh, if necessary. As a general rule of thumb, it's better to have um, less services running and less things installed on a system from a security standpoint. Click on Next. Uh, of course, we have to restart. It's Windows, so we have to restart all the time. So after IS finishes, we'll go ahead and restart. Uh, I will pause the video and come back after this install is finished, and then we'll look over IS and make sure it's working properly. All right, looks like it's finished, so close, and it should restart. If not, we'll go ahead and manually restart. I'll go ahead and manually restart it if it doesn't already. All right, when that comes back up, we'll run through a couple options here. Okay, it's finally rebooted, so let's log on here. And we're going to validate IIS is working both internally and externally. We'll validate it's working uh, from the virtual machine itself, from within Windows Server 2016, and then we'll check it out externally from a different system. Let's go ahead uh, when this finishes uh, booting up here. We should see under admin tools now this new option, Internet Information Services, IIS. And we can also go to a browser and just check that we have this running. So I should be able to go to my local host, 127 to 0. Oop. It's fine, 127. And we see we get the default Internet Information Services page, which is what we expected because we just added IS. Close this here. Here is the uh, IIS manager. And we can change that default page if we'd like to. I will show you where that's listed. So here's the settings. If we click on default document, we have all these are the default types. We can go to the content view, and we have one site set up here. It's just a default website right there. Uh, and it is opening IIS start each time. So when I browse to the website right here, this is actually opening up IIS start. So if we change this file to something different, uh, we can modify what the default comes up as. So let's look at where that file is located. Let's go to the Windows Explorer here. 
sorry, files, file explorer. We'll go to this PC. We'll go to the C drive. We'll look at INET pub. WWW root. And there's IIS start. So let's rename this um, to dot old. And actually, let's change these view real quick. We want to be able to see everything over here under options. Let's see view. So let's uh, show hidden files. Let's turn off these so we can see what the extensions are. Okay, so now it's is.old.htm. That's not what we wanted. So let's change the old at the end. Now let's create a new file here called uh, a new file. We just call it um, index. We'll do a text document index.htm. Yes, we'll go ahead and open this with Notepad and put this is an awesome. Landing, landing page, landing page, landing page. Oh, here we go, landing page. Boom. Save that. So now, if I go, let's just double check here. So we did index.htm. Let's see what the defaults are, the default documents. There's index.htm. Now, if I go browse to the system, <clears throat> it should bring up what we put in there. This is an awesome landing page. Check that out. So we were able to access the system from within itself. Let's check it out from another system. Uh, in our environment, we have Oracle VirtualBox running. I'm going to put this machine on the same network as the host machine, which is running Windows 10 Professional. So to do that, I'm going to press the host key, which is the right control, and then home. Go to machine here. Go to settings and change the network settings to host only adapter. <clears throat> so that'll drop the network connection and bring it back up, but it should come back up on a 192.168.56 network. You can validate that with PowerShell. So let's type in IF config here, sorry, IP config, and it is uh, 56104. Now I should be able to bring a browser. This browser window I'm dragging over here is from the host. Sorry about that. <laughs> Get a little crazy my dragging. Uh, from the host. And this should be able to hit that machine now that we change the network setting to be host only 56. Um, I forgot the IP address of the thing is 102. 192.168.56.102. So it's interesting. This is, uh, it looks like it's spinning there. It hasn't actually loaded. Uh, let's check our setting on Windows. This one is 104. Maybe that's why I typed in the wrong IP address. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's go back to the browser and we'll try 104. It always helps if you type in the right IP address. And there we go. This is an awesome landing page. So that's pretty much it. We validated that um, we got IIS installed. We validated we can make a couple changes. It's working both internally and externally, which is what we want.